Welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. In today's video, I have just one job, and that is this case. It's a John's bow. Let's see, I think it is C2. So, John's bow C2. And the job for this case is the power supply. Usually, you can use an ATX power supply with this case, but because the case is very small, the power supply would basically take up this much space. For that reason, I got a cheap SFX power supply. This one is Unica CH. As you can see, the power supply is cheap. It cannot just go inside this case. So I need to make a back plate for it. You could just buy it. I'll be making it, well, not from scratch. I have this one from an old PSU, from an ATX one. So I will simply pop this in, but I need the connector and I will also put the switch there, because usually the cheap SFX power supplies do not have a switch. This one does have it, but because the power supply will be inside the case, and in this case it will be mounted in the front and the case will be always closed, so there is no way of getting to the power button to turn it off. So what I need to do, just test it out how this would look like, so the power supply will go in this way, I need to route the cable on the top, so this should give you a better view. So this power supply will go in like so. So this will be somewhere like here. And then I need to route the cable to this slot. I did buy a cable. It's this one. So this will connect to the PSU itself. But I will cut off this piece and connect it to this one, which was previously inside the PSU that had this back plate. So this connector has three pins. If I switch it over the middle one, this one is ground. Then we have the top one. This one is the positive and the bottom one is the negative. How I will connect it to this cable is simply connect the ground to the ground, the negative to the negative, but the positive will be connected via a switch. So this positive will go to one side of the switch. Now this doesn't matter which side you use because it will only connect the positive side of the cable. So one side will go to here and the other one will go to the positive lead of this cable. And now what are these extra elements on this connector? All of these are capacitors. This is a big one and these are two smaller ones. The smaller ones, I think, were meant to provide electricity to, to not have any ripples. And the bigger one, I think, just provides the electricity to have the maximum output. And this one is 0.47 microfarads at 250 volts. As for the smaller ones, I don't really see any values. So I will just leave all of these extra elements connected. It shouldn't make any difference, but I will desolder the wires and solder the new ones from the cable that I will cut. And also how long does the cable have to be? In this case, it will go somewhere from this location over at the top. So something like this should be enough and I'll still be left with a decent piece of cable if I need it for another project. And if you make something similar as I will do, just take a look how this adapter is connected to the power supply because the 90 degree angle can come in this direction. I think this one is called the right one. I'll just leave a bit more cable than what I need.
I was lucky, this was not a knife. So I finally got that off. We are now left with three wires. The green and yellow one, this is ground. This is easily distinguishable. This will go to the middle pin instead of this wire. Then we have the blue one, which will go here. This is the negative. And the brown one, which is the positive. It will go one knot to here. Because first I need to connect one side of the switch to this pin and then the other side to this one. And if you must know, this switch is not something that comes with a plate like this. I lost this switch or used it in another project. So I had to make a cutout to fit this new switch. So that is the preparation done. We can now power on the soldering iron. And also before you start putting the wires together, if you want, or at least I suggest, you get some shrink tape or shrink tube. Now in this case I won't be able to put it over all of the connections. First things first, let's get some of the wires off. So I managed to get the wires out with the help of these pliers. Otherwise it would be quite painful to do. And luckily it doesn't look like I have messed any of the pins. So that's good. And I also see all of the holes so I can simply put the wires through and add some more solder to this. But because I didn't do this fast enough, these pins were actually quite hot. So if you remember, this is the plus. So one side of this switch will go to the plus. But before it does, I actually have to put the switch in to this plate. And I will put it so that when this is turned on, the switch will be like so. Like so. So one is on. So put the switch in. As you can see, it's a snug fit. Do I also actually have to put this in? I think I do. So I'll put this in as well. Also a snug fit. So that wire is through. And I simply have to connect it. Like so. And I think this one will need a bit of tape. Well, not tape. So shrink wrap. So that is one done. Then we have the ground. Well, this insulation is real shit. Why do I say that? Well, because of piece of wire from this small component actually burned right through. And lastly, we have the negative. So that should do it. I now have the switch, but this is a little bit too big. So what I will do is put this over the top, put the wires over the top, bend this two and bend this one. That should be all good. So it doesn't take a lot of space and the cable should be long enough to go something like so. So let's quickly put this in. As you can see, it looks like so. It's not that thick. I also tuck the cables away. So this should fit nicely in. So let's do just that. Now I did have a plan of spray painting this case, which I might do, just not at the moment. And now before I finish this off, you will probably wonder does this even do what I want it to do? Only one way to find out. Now I won't connect it to the power supply just yet. But I can take a cable and see if I get the voltage in the direction that I actually want. And in this case, how that should look like is that the positive side is this one. Which does say L, so this is line. This is N neutral and this is ground. Well, in any case, what I can do is plug this in, have this turn to off, connect it, close my eyes, hope that nothing pops, and turn this on. So I should be getting power now to this connection. 
and also because all of this is exposed, do not touch it if you make the same kind of mod. Now if my multimeter does work, well it does, but can I get these tiny leads into this connector, which I don't think I can. Nope, I cannot. Previously it was getting late and I didn't have a way to test if I connect everything right. Well, it turns out, because I chopped the cable off, I do have this piece that I can connect. And now when I switch this on, this will be live, so I do not want to touch it. And you should also be able to see the volts. This will be AC, so you should see about 220 to 230. So the negative is blue and positive is brown. And as you can see we do have 230 AC. That's it for this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see an office PC that I will build using this case and cheap components that I had still lying around. And you know what you can also do? In this case, use a full-size GPU vertically.